Welcome to People to People. I'm Micah Mater. Let's get started. The headlines of the week may have been bombarded with politics, but guess what? We're still in the middle of a pandemic. With new strains, climbing numbers, and questions about vaccines, there's a whole lot to talk about. Dr. Jeffrey Sterling, physician, author, and president, co-founder, and CEO of Managed Care Initiative, Simcoe, is here with the latest. Nice to see you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Always good to be with you. And Please always, hope you're safe. always, always good to have you. Love <laughs> your insight. Um, first of all, let's Thank talk you. a little bit about COVID-19. You know, it's been several months, but it is still rampant. It is still here, right? Places like, well, England shut down. Uh, Los Angeles is on lockdown. Right. It's still rampant. That's right. Yeah, I mean, consider, if you will, um, influenza has been with us for 100 years. These vaccines have nothing better to do than to seek us out and to systematically try to kill every single one of us. That is actually the intention until and unless we do something to combat it. Well, we know that there is a vaccine out. Several different companies have put them out. Is one better mm -hmm. than the other? Um, to a medical certainty, no. I think that the two that we have in the United States are qualitatively different than what's come out in England. There's an Oxford vaccine over there. And over in China, there's a Sinopharm vaccine that's come out over there. And respectively, those are about 70 to 85 percent effective. Both of ours in the United States are at about 95 percent effective. So if you have a choice, I would actually suggest that you get the one that you can get quickest in the United States. And that is the Moderna one? That's correct. Okay. Um, That's the one I got, actually, Moderna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about it. You got a Moderna. How long ago? Um, I think it's been 11 days now. Okay. How are you feeling? Um, if we weren't talking about it, I probably would have forgotten that I got it. Really? Now, this is the one that has to take two shots, right? Right. Both of the ones that are currently approved in, in the United States require two separate doses, either 21 or 28 days apart, depending on which one you get. So no side effects, nothing? Well, I mean, other than the fact that you were kind of jabbed in the shoulder with a needle. I mean, so there's localized pain. There may be some redness and swelling, but that's really it. Um, the most commonly expressed side effects are things like that. And then there are other things like um, maybe a little bit of fatigue, but th that's the immune response building up inside of you. So these are things that are all um, considerations, but they won't interrupt your day. You're actually hoping that there's a reaction to show that your body is actually ah. fighting that disease, right? <laughs> That's a very good point. Exactly. That's a great way to look at it. Um, a lot of people in the African-American community are very afraid of the vaccine. A lot of people have asked me, are you going to get one? Right now, they're only um, inoculating uh, essential workers and eventually, you know, uh, people in nursing homes, the elderly. But should we be afraid to get this vaccine? Um, it's OK to have your concerns. I think that the fears are unfounded. You know, I actually would suggest to the African-American community in particular that you should be fighting to get to the front of the line. Really? When you have something that is 95 percent effective, you need to go with that. And once again, I'm an emergency physician by training. So one of our sayings is that you should never let a potential side effect get in the way of a defined life threat. Now, we know that this disease is actually killing African-Americans at twice exactly. the rate of the general population. So, you know, why am I going to be worried about some innocuous um, side effects when this disease is taking out thousands of us on a daily basis across the country? But, Doctor, you say unfounded, and I think a lot of people are, the reticence is not because of the side effects. A lot of people are saying because of things like the Tuskegee experiment, when they killed a lot of people with syphilis. Also, Henrietta Lacks, whose uh, cancer cells are still being used, and there was, you know, the, the family never knew anything about this. Well, you know, let me just, I hope that there's a nuance that people will appreciate. First of all, Tuskegee was about 40 or 50 years ago, and that was the equivalent of a medical equivalent of a war crime. Um, the government over 40 years injected and, and exposed the African-American community to syphilis. Even when penicillin was a known treatment that was available just to explore what secondary and tertiary syphilis would look like in untreated patients. That was an example of something being given to us in a way to harm us. In this example, the appropriate analogy is not fear 
of um, Tuskegee. Because in this analogy, COVID is actually the thing that we should be fearful of. The vaccine is actually the solution. And in this example, we've already been disproportionately affected by the disease. And in this example, the solution is actually there for us. And as I said before, if we race to the front of the line as soon as it's available to us, then we have an opportunity here to get that cure. That is qualitatively different than what happened in Tuskegee, with all due respect. So it's good to have reasonable fears, mm -hmm. but there's irrational, I mean, reasonable concerns, but irrational fears. You shouldn't. And one more point I want to make that's kind of important. There are tens of thousands of physicians and scientists like myself who exist simply because of the initiatives and the efforts of generations of people that grew out of the Tuskegee experiment to get better representation in the African-American community to make sure these types of things don't occur again and again and again. My existence is in large part due to protect and mm -hmm. to make sure that you now have assurances that physicians like myself would be first speaking out and we are first in overseeing the process so that we can give you a level of assurance that everything is okay this time this is not the same all right thank you doctor tell me about the rollout of this vaccine are you happy with the way it's rolling out or should it be changed i know that uh, mayor lori lightfoot is saying that we as chicagoans have not getting a big getting are not getting enough of the vaccine to uh vaccinate everyone well in a word no um, nationally only about 30 percent of the doses that have been distributed have been put in arms, which is a pretty poor performance, to be blunt. I think that once upon a time, the president suggested that we'd have 100 million um, doses that were administered prior to years in, and members of the administration um, ramped that down to 40 percent and sub excuse me, 40 million, and subsequently uh, 20 million. In fact, there's only been five not even 5.3 million doses that have actually been given. In Illinois, that number is about 190,000 doses that have been given to individuals out of about 542,000 doses that have been distributed. So in Illinois, we're performing at about a 35% clip of what's been delivered to us compared to 30% nationally. Under either event, it is really pretty shocking that the distribution um, chain has not been more efficient. Uh, and that simply represents um, poor planning and, and implementation of a strategy. And quickly, uh, we saw what happened on Capitol Hill this past week, the insurrection, uh, the people, uh, you know, barging into the Capitol, uh, the building without masks, many of them. Could, should we expect that to be a super spreader? Well, I mean, you have a triple-headed monster of super spreaders that are occurring right now. We still are just now coming upon the results of what happened with the large travel that occurred um, during the holiday season. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that the single biggest travel day of the year was the Sunday after Christmas. So that is manifesting itself right now. Then you have the situation with the European strain that is coming over here. That's going to manifest itself mm -hmm. in a different way as well. And continued events like what happened at the Capitol yesterday, independently, those individuals having come from all across the country, exposing each other and those in the Capitol. As a matter of fact, one um, congressman actually developed COVID immediately after um, participating in the deliberations in the Congress. Mm -hmm. So those three things are all part of the ongoing stew that keeps this thing spiraling up and out of control. The last two days actually have shown the largest two um, death counts in the United States, and that's going to continue, unfortunately, throughout wow. January. Is it safe to go back to school? Um, Everything can be done because you you're talking to somebody that goes into hospitals every day. Mm -hmm. So there is not an absolute yes or no, because we expose ourselves on a daily basis and still manage to come out of it OK. But if we practice best practices, if we masked up, if we engaged in social distancing, if we did the sanitizing and the hand washing, et cetera, et cetera, and had access to rapid tests, then conceivably there's a way to do this without you promoting mass infections. Unfortunately, the devil is in the implementation of these public health best practices. And to this point, there have been more examples than not of poor implementation, which leads to ongoing right. spiraling of, of the diseases. All right. Thank you, Dr. Jeffrey Sterling. Be safe. Be well. You too. It's always Thank good you. seeing you. Same here.